On a recent clear night, I took this image of the Andromeda galaxy. This got me wondering about what it is that we are actually looking at. So today we're going on a journey to the Andromeda galaxy. It is the closest spiral galaxy to our own Milky Way, being only 2.5 million light years away. It is also the most distant object visible to the naked eye. From a dark site, you can see it as a faint smudge against the night sky. To give you an idea of how far away that faint smudge you see is, consider this. The fastest human-made object, the Parker Space Probe, was traveling at 532,000 kilometers an hour when it reached its maximum speed while hurtling towards the sun. Even at those speeds, it would take the Parker Space Probe over 5 billion years to reach the Andromeda Galaxy. By that time, our sun would have reached the end of its life. However, the Andromeda Galaxy is traveling towards us at about 400,000 kilometers an hour, so it will collide with the Milky Way in about 5 billion years. Both of these galaxies have a large shell of ionized gas around them that stretches far beyond their visible extent. And these shells of ionized gas have already begun to collide. Since we don't have 5 billion years to wait to get a closer look at the Andromeda Galaxy, we can use the power of imagination and the wonders of science to explore what we are actually looking at in my picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. As we begin our journey, we leave the familiar comfort of our planet and blast off into the great unknown. We break through the Earth's atmosphere and catch a glimpse of the moon our closest celestial neighbor. We fly by, marveling at its cratered surface and remembering the incredible achievements of human space exploration. We say goodbye to our solar system and head towards Myrak, a red giant star with a radius a hundred times greater than our sun. It is a bright naked eye star that I often use to find Andromeda in my telescope. Although Myrak is 200 light years away, or about 2000 trillion kilometers, it is pretty close in cosmic terms and we arrive there in no time. From here we turn to our next waypoint, the star Nu Andromeda, about 600 light years away. New Andromeda is a young star, a few times larger than our sun. Lurking in the background, we see the unchanging glow of the Andromeda galaxy. As we pick up speed, stars begin to fly by, like snowflakes illuminated by the headlights of a car driving through a snowstorm. As we leave the dense suburbs of our stellar neighborhood behind, the stars become more rare. We are now entering the vast emptiness of intergalactic space. Here, there are no stars and no planets, only the empty vacuum of intergalactic space. We are completely alone. We turn around to take one last look at our home, the Milky Way galaxy, and then onward to Andromeda. Andromeda grows larger in our field of view as we make our approach. We are now beginning to encounter a few stars in the outer halo of Andromeda. We can clearly see its dust lanes and its spiral structure, which has been distorted by its past collisions with other satellite galaxies. We see the glow of the galaxy's core where the central black hole resides. We finally reach our destination, another island universe with its own one trillion stars, with billions of planets orbiting those stars, perhaps some that would remind us of Earth.
We are now moving through the suburbs of Andromeda and stars are more common here. We encounter huge nebulae, regions of intense star formation. We encounter clusters of hot young stars and dark clouds of dust and gas that block the light of the stars behind them. And finally, we get a clear view of the core of Andromeda. At the heart of Andromeda lies a monster of unimaginable power. As we approach the core of the galaxy, we initially see a cluster of stars orbiting the core. These bright blue stars are orbiting the supermassive black hole, which has a mass of over 140 million times greater than our sun. We can see a ring of intensely glowing gas orbiting the event horizon. The gas is being heated to billions of degrees by friction between the gas particles. We also see powerful jets of gas being shot out from the top and bottom of the disk. These are made of matter that was falling towards the event horizon of the black hole but was far enough away that it instead got shot out perpendicular to the disk at close to the speed of light. The mass of the black hole is distorting space-time around it and we can see it bending the light of the stars behind the black hole. We are now a mere 10 billion kilometers away from the black hole. For context, this is just a little further out than the orbit of Pluto from our sun. We travel closer to the event horizon of the black hole this is the region where not even light can escape the immense gravitational pull. This is the point of no return, and there are no happy endings when orbiting a black hole. We find ourselves back on Earth, staring at my image of Andromeda. We must have zoned out. It's easy to get lost in thought when thinking about space. I hope you enjoyed the ride as much as I did, and if so, please consider liking and subscribing, and join me next time as I do a deep dive into another one of my images. Until then, clear skies.